all right i thought i would just upload a, a kind of like a preview video as it were to one of me uh, long-winded videos to do with this unit and a ton of microphones but I'm absolutely blown away, so I just thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll upload a couple of examples for the uh, for the Edius forum to have a look at, because I'm I swear this is going to be amazing for so many people who use Edius who shoot their own material. Right, what it is, it's this unit here, which is the Saramonic Smart Rig, and it's basically a microphone preamplifier. Now, what it is in that mode there, it acts just as a preamp, and then in that mode there, it acts as a preamp, but also 48 volt fa uh, phantom power supply and there's your simple attenuation gain control on the front there and then what it does it has an xlr input on it and then that xlr input then goes to a trrs output now that trrs output is normally associated with their uh, like smartphones and whatnot and what it is it's a cable that sends um let's see stereo headphone and mono microphone down to one cable uh, pcs also use it now what you can do you can pop in one of these on the end and this is just a simple cable adapter which then turns the trrs into a stereo headphone and mono microphone now the reason why you would do that is because in its trrs configuration it won't you can't plug it straight into say the 3.5 mil input on say a, a camcorder or a dslr because it won't work like that it's designed for phones and what have you and computers but with that on or a simple conversion to the end to turn that into a trs and, and just permanently a microphone out then yeah you can plug it straight into uh, camcorders or anything with a 3.5 mil audio input for microphones okay so what i'm going to do uh, like i say this is ahead of my main video that i'm making but i'm so blown away by this device it is so quiet and the gain is amazing on it and it powers every single condenser and that's studio condensers that i've got as well um, so two examples using the Rode NT5. One is just to see if the NT5 is okay as a, a boom mic. Um, and then the other example is the NT5 for like close mic work. Uh, it's, like, it's like voiceover radio type stuff uh, or that radio type sound. And um, could be good for podcast and vlog and all kinds of things. Okay, so like I say, this video is um, not the full-blown video is just because I'm dead excited and I need to play these examples out because they're amazing. Okay, so I'll play these through and then I'll post back as well once I do my full-blown review with a ton of different microphones on it. Okay, so I'm on the NT5 again, but in this configuration, it's coming over the top on a boom. So this is kind of emulating, well, not even emulating, I'm actually doing a proper on boom with a microphone. Uh, and for, for exactly this type of shot, you know, either a talking head shot or something to camera, or even this is how you would kind of like, you know, set up for, say, interview work or, you know, certain studio type stuff. Yeah, so if you like the sound of this, then the NT5 could actually be the perfect microphone for certain people. It's a fantastic studio microphone for, you know, for a small head condenser, you know, such a small form uh, body as well, this, this type of pencil mic. It's great for getting in and out of all kinds of stuff. It's useful on drums, for overheads, even close mic and on some other, you know, percussion instruments. Fantastic on classic, um, uh, sorry, acoustic guitar. I've done a lot of that. It's amazing. Works with certain voices for singing as well. And also you can do close micing with it to emulate things like uh, like what you would typically associate like with a radio voice or something where you just need ultra close, clean dialogue without uh, getting any room environment in it. Um, the only thing is when you get closer to it, especially if you're going to be doing vocal stuff or like narration work, you've got to filter the mic quite heavily, to be honest. Um, and also... You know, if, when you go into post with it, it could probably do with being rolled off a little bit at the bottom or a notch filter or something, just to take out some of that real low end thud that can come into the microphone. Yeah, but like I say, this is it in this particular mode, over the top as you would do with the boom mic, give you a good idea of exactly how this microphone sounds. Okay, so now I'm onto the NT5 and I'm doing a close mic with this. Now, the capsule is about four inches away from my mouth, which is extremely close for this type of microphone for doing dialogue stuff. Now, in order to get this close, you're going to have to filter or, or block off 
you know, some of the wind and the plosives a lot more than what you would do in other configurations or with other microphones. So how I've got this set right now, it's got the actual uh, the, the, the foam filter that comes with the mic. Then I've put another foam filter over that. And then I've got this wire mesh in front. Now, I think some people refer to this as a spit guard, but whatever it is, whether you say windshield spit guard, the wire mesh will actually cut down a bit of a bit of wind. So in this configuration, it's very heavily filtered before you do anything with it. Now, the reason for that is because the closer you get to this microphone with, say, something like a voice, which is carrying wind and stuff, it's going to accentuate the base end of this capsule and it'll kind of like it, you can go a bit too far with it as well i think the way i've got this and the and the input into the camera of the saramonic it's probably balanced fairly optimally for, for this type of distance and whatnot now although this microphone is awesome and it's a it's a real good workhorse in the studio uh, drums percussion overheads uh, piano acoustic all kinds of all kinds of stuff i mean you, you can mic up cabs with it as well for guitars and everything it's also good for certain types of vocals as well um but there's no reason why you can't use it like this now the reason why you might want to you, you know record like this is because you want that very close sound that you kind of get with like radio and stuff like that and plus also the closer you actually get to a microphone like this especially a sensitive one like this and if you get the gain right or you attenuate it correctly you, you'll knock out a lot of the room as well so if you're in like a bit of a kind of lively room with a little bit of close like reverb echo in it and stuff this this kind of mic and very close will help you to get rid of some of the the, the, the noise in the room. So, right. <clears throat> so I've backed off from the microphone. Um, this should be a lot lower than what it was just when it was on top of it. But you'll probably hear a bit more of the room. Now this room isn't particularly too lively, so it's not you know it's not so bad anyway. The room, but once I get back on top of it again, you'll get that fuller EQ sound as well. Okay, so this just gives another example of the Saramonic uh, with this microphone and just plug straight into the AX100.